Hi and welcome to HTML from scratch and this is your ultimate guide to using HTML tables. So here I've got an empty HTML document open in my text editor and here I've got the empty page ready to look at. So let's dive straight in. We're going to look at HTML tables. Now, of course, I have to start with my HTML tags and I really should have a, uh, a head tag and slash head. We're probably going to put some styles in there later and I'm going to have my body and there we go. So now we're ready to start working with tables. Now, rule number one, the most single important thing that you have to know about tables is this. Tables are for ordering and dis displaying tabular data. They are not for, they should never really be used for uh, layout purposes. In the old days, I mean, I've been doing this since 1994. In the old days, the structure of tables was literally the only way that you could get things to line up the way you wanted to side by side because you could arrange things in a series of cells and really the you know the for the HTML that we were using for the first pretty much the first 10 years of the web was a terrible mess of n tables nested within tables nested within tables um, these days that is completely the wrong way to do things apart from there's one or two exceptions um, where it simply is the most pragmatic approach one of those areas is if you are formatting HTML emails and you need your emails to work in a massive range of browsers um, some of which are quite legacy uh, you, I mean you, we're pretty sure that most people are using fairly up-to-date web browsers on their computers or on their tablets and phones but there are some of the email browsers that are still around and not able to to keep up so um, you know as with everything else pragmatism comes first we don't want to be too religious about the appropriate semantic use of HTML um, although what I'm going to teach you today is the pretty much the, the correct way. So when we talk about uh, the display of tabular data, what do we mean? Well, all you pretty much have to do is think about a spreadsheet. And in this spreadsheet, everything that's on the same row is related in some way, okay? And everything that's in the same column is related in some way. So the rows, for example, might represent a week. Right, so everything along that row is to do with that week. So the header of the row, the header cell, which is quite often frozen in a spreadsheet, um, describes that property that everything on that row has in common. And exactly the same thing goes for columns. So the column might represent, for example, the number of sales made or the total dollar amount of sales made and everything down that column is defined and described by that header. So keep that in your mind as we're working through HTML tables. So I'm going to start off with the table tag. Okay, now the table tag pretty much does nothing on its own. Um, you can't put content directly into it. It's obviously a paired tag. It has a start and a finish. It could have uh, it could have a, uh, an ID, it can have class names, um, but the table pretty much doesn't do anything particularly on its own. The table is then made up of multiple rows, okay? So that's a TR, is a table row. Again, it's a open close tag, and a table row as well does pretty much nothing. So I'm going to save that and reload it and you'll see that there's nothing to see in the HTML document until we decide to put in a table cell. Now it doesn't say table cell, the tag is TD and that means table data. It's a kind of a legacy thing um, from 
before. So here is some some data. If I can learn to type. And there we go, there is a table. Now you can't actually see the table, can you? I'll make the, the font size slightly bigger there. You can't see the table. The table doesn't have any border on it or any any styling. In the old days, we used to put things like border equals one um, cell padding equals say two, for example, and that would give you something like that. Okay, so you're adding. Oops. There we go. So there's two pixels of padding all inside the table cell and the table has this border. Now, of course, that stuff is display information and display information does not belong in HTML, as we know. If you want to add some display stuff, then you should do it in a style tag. If you're doing pure HTML5, you can just say style. Um, if you want it to be strict, um, compatible with previous versions of HTML, you should add the type property, type equals text forward slash CSS. And here, for example, you may then define a, um, a table with a you know, border one pixel solid black. Okay, and that's going to do more or less the same thing. So there you've got the thing, and I may also then add a table TD. It's pretty much the same as just saying TD. I might say padding five pixels. Okay, Let's save that, and there we've got some padding. So we've done the same thing there, although we've got more padding. Um, done the same thing using CSS as we were doing using the old table properties from before. So let's just add some more stuff. Uh, cell number two and yet more stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna get there is three cells all in one row. You can see because we've applied the border to the whole table you can't really tell the difference between the cells. So let's add um, border one pixel solid, and I'm going to make it like a light gray. CCC. Notice here that I'm putting the CSS style properties in alphabetical order. So I put the border before the padding. Browsers like you to do that. Okay, and there you go. We've got a slight padding now in our table cells. All good fun. But that, we're not really talking about style in this video. I'm going to show you a lot of cool style stuff in the next video to help how to make your tables look really sexy. Now, so we've looked at the table row. We've looked at the table data, which is your cell. If I have more than one row, then we can see it's starting to look like an actual table. Now let's move on to two different parts of the table. This is perfectly valid what we've got now, but um, you tables also have the table head section, which is similar to the head of your HTML document. And they may also have T body which is your table body tag. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want to indent all of that. Okay, so it's all lining up. I just like to do things that way. If I save this, you won't see any difference. So I've refreshed that. You don't see any difference in there. Now, so what? It, let's think what is the, uh, the, the difference with this. A table head stores some information a bit like your HTML head tag, as in some of the information is not strictly visible. And you can you can put things like caption, for example. Um, this is a demo table. Okay, now 
refresh that and there the the caption that's basically your title of the table you can style that however you want and the caption could also be useful in a similar way to for example the alt property of an image or the long desk property of an image which describes what's in the table um, so you know other user agents like text to speech readers could come along and it could say here's a table and then say the caption this is what it says this is what the table's about and then the person using that text to speech browser can then decide whether they want to listen to all the contents of the table or not right so it's important to describe things in ways that uh, you know may not be obvious to everybody of course the other type of user agents that that we um, love to help are search engine spiders so you know this caption could tell Google what the table is as well. So that's something that goes into your T head. Your T body is basically the, um, the the contents of your of your table. So let's add something else. I'm going to show you another type of tag. Okay, and that's a th tag. Th tags can go in rows and they can go at the top of rows which we'll come on to but they are different to table data th tags are for the header cells remember when we we're talking about spreadsheets how the header cell at the start of a row might define what that row is so for example I might say this is something like um, you know week one for example and I should have equivalent ones on my second row, which might say week two. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to refresh. Now, of course, the styling here is the browser's default styling. Okay, so what that's doing is it's saying that the THs, the the um, table head cells, are to be displayed in bold, um, whereas TD cells are not displayed in bold. Okay, you can also see that because these are THs and not TDs, I've defined a border for my TD tags, but not for my THs. So they're, they're coming out slightly differently. I can very easily remedy that by saying TH, and I really don't need that table bit on there. That's a bit superfluous. So if I refresh this now, we're going to get padding and border, there you go, on the TH tags as well. If I want to make my TH tags, um, oops. I want to give them say a background color I might just say background color and put them I don't know AAA so they're gonna come out as gray okay now here's the other interesting thing you can also in your T head put a row okay and then if you do that you can put THs for each of the columns that you've got. Here I've actually got four columns now, so I'm going to put four THs. Paste that, and I might call them, for example, week, and then say salesperson, and then say, for example, um, number of sales, and here I might say sales amount. Okay, so if I save that and pull it up, you see now we're starting to look much more spreadsheet-like. We've got our header cells now at the top of each cell as well. Okay, the last thing that I'll show you quickly in this video is to do with the styling and specifically the spacing of this content. So um, let me just quickly... Um, just going to add some data in here. Colin the Viking. And what have we got? Number of sales. Brian Blood X has made 13 sales in that week. And Colin the Viking has made 9. And Brian has sold, let's say, $192.50. And Colin the Viking has sold, how much? What do you think? $99.50. 
10 okay so this is going to look slightly more realistic now um, what you what you can see here is that the table is actually spacing these column widths as it sees fit in order to you know to make sure the data fits so if there was a um, a lot more uh, the best salesman we have on the team right now for example you can see now it's it's doing its best to space the column widths to adjust the column widths pretty much in order to keep the table as short as possible and because we've got a lot more data in that cell now then it's given that column more width to keep this onto um, as few lines as possible okay um, that's pretty much the way it works now let's say you wanted to override your browser's default column uh, widths now there are a few ways you could do this one thing is you could for example if you want the week the week not to wrap you could put um, no wrap in there that would probably work no it doesn't no wrap is actually um, an old-fashioned thing of course you know uh, it's not no longer supported in HTML5 so um, we shouldn't be using it because it is obviously display stuff so if you if you want to stop something from wrapping you would want to put it in your styles however that's not what I wanted to show you what I wanted to show you is the columns all right now a lot of people who use tables don't realize that we have actually column tags that you can use within tables okay so it's best practice to put them in a col group now you can um, you can assign certain properties to col groups so you can group a number of columns together and say that everything in this column has a certain type of property okay uh, I'm not going to do that right now I'm just going to say that here is a column and let's copy that column to make four okay now let's say I want to say that the width uh, we'll do we'll use style so style equals width 25% okay and I'll just copy that four times now what do you, what do you think is going to happen we've just defined the columns separately before any of the information has come on the table now if I refresh this it is saying that each of these columns in the table is 25% width and that's definitely changed uh, what we've got now of course I've hard coded now some styles into this into my HTML which is not best practice so we're going to do it a slightly different way right so I'm, I'm gonna give these some custom classes and I'm simply going to call them column 1 column 2 column 3 column 4 and up here then I want to say that column 1 is going to be a particular width etc so because I'm using CSS classes I have to start with a period a dot full stop column 1 and width of that is going to be 15 percent okay oops and this is letting me adjust them how I want so that's a lot more that's gonna be 35 percent and we'll say that these are 25 percent each okay now this should work and you see it is working all right so my weeks are now wrapping which which is okay sales amount is wrapping so you can really play with your um, your widths that way and it's much easier to do because it means that you can then repeat this kind of table somewhere um, and apply the same styles in multiple places particularly if you don't have this style in the page itself you would normally have it in an external style sheet so another thing I might do is to say that my you know if I have a table of class sales column one I want these to appear in that way um, and what that would let me do is for example have another 
you know, have a forecast report or a weather table, or lots of different types of tables, and I can still reuse column one, column two, column three, column four, if I want to do that. Okay. Um, yes. There's a final one that you may want to use as well, which, like the T head and the T body, which is the T foot. Now, bizarrely, the T foot tag actually follows the T head and goes before the T body, which can be a bit weird. All right. Um, so in my T foot, I would have a, a, a row as normal. Okay, and I would have TD cells. So you you may, for example, do you know, you might have this say for your your summaries. In fact, I should have a TH cell at the beginning of there as well. Um, I might say for, for example totals for that. So in my first column there's nothing, my second column there's nothing, these aren't relevant. My third column it would be 22, and in my fourth column it would be $291.60. Okay, so save that, refresh. Aha. Uh -huh. Remove one of those, and there we go. So this is my T foot. Of course, if I wanted to, I could style my um, my T foot cells slightly differently. So I could go T foot T D background, and I'm going to make this yellow. So F F C, and there you go. So there's my T foot cells styled slightly differently, and um, that's pretty much everything you need to know for most uses of your HTML table. In the next video, I'm going to show you some sexy HTML table styling. Um, so if you're a Web Design From Scratch premium subscriber, then just click onto the next video and check that out. I'm also gonna give you um, a load of styles that you can just literally copy and paste into your own projects. Just swipe them and go. Okay, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.